purchase. Okay. So what are registers? Um, first of all, uh, if you want to remember registers, because we actually went through this before, you can go back to the D flip flop and actually the flip flop uh, exercise that uh, we have in the video lecture 17. I remember. Um, so in that ex in the exercise, we actually view a, a sequential adder, right? So we actually use some registers. Um, that type of register is called shift registers. We use registers to transfer data into the adder and store data. Okay. So technically, it's a group of flip flop that store information or store memory. Okay. So each each flip flop each flip flop will store one bit of the information. So when you have uh, let's say four bit registers, you will have four different flip flop and each of them will store one bit of the information. So total you can store four bit information with four bit flip flop. Uh, and so on if you have n number of bit you need n number of flip flop so the flip flop can be arranged in two different ways in the sequential adder exercise the flip flop was arranged in sequential okay arrangement but you can also do a parallel one okay or you can do a serials one okay so parallel serial Okay, you can actually add some combinational logic in front, in the front of the D flip flop. Okay, uh, but it's not necessary, and we will go through uh, different cases of when you add and when you don't add. First of all, uh, let's discuss about uh, parallel registers. Okay, so when I say load, okay, there's some definition. Like terminology in here so loading of the registers if I say loading the registers that's mean transfer new information or new data to the registers okay if the loading is done parallelly uh, is when all of the bit of the registers is loaded simultaneously okay under like this with the common clock box so this is one of the basic Four bit uh, parallel registers that we have. You can find this figure in your figure 6.1 in your textbook. In this figure here, you can see clock is applied. It's applied to the C input, which is the clock input of the D flip flop. And the, uh, and the input, so I3 to I0, uh, all of them are loaded parallelly. You can see loaded parallelly to its D flip flop, right? So it's also loaded directly into the D flip flop. There's no combinational circuit between here and here, okay? So you can see the content, the content of the input I will be unchained after it's loaded into the input A, okay? Uh, and you notice there's no logic in the front of the D flip flop, right? So in this case of the scenario, um, there is something you have to remember. If you use this type of registers, the every time you load, every time you load the the input to here, okay, you have to do something. For example, if you want to load the input to here, right, you have to make sure that this input data is held constant so that means the data bus driving the registers would be un un unavailable for all the traffic or another approach would be you can try to use an enable gate okay you can try to use an enable gate to uh, control the clock okay but there's an there's an there's a reason why you may not want to do it Okay, because if you put a combinational circuit on the clock, it will introduce some gate delay in the clock. 
therefore it may interfere with uh, how to keep the clock like synchronous throughout the whole lecture. So this is what to remember if you insert a logic gate in the clock path it will produce an even propagation delay okay, between the clock and input. So when you design a parallel register, you must ensure that clock pulse must, must be arriving at the same time and this is called synchronism. Okay. So in, instead of putting some control circuit in here, uh, you can put control circuit in the input instead. Okay, so in front of the input, that's 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 okay, uh, but not the clock. So just if you design something, leave the clock alone. Okay, just don't try to mess with the clock. So now you have this type circuit here. You can find this figure in uh, figure 6.2 in your textbook. So first of all, you can see now we have another input which is called load. Okay, so whether uh, so this load input will decide uh, what action uh, to do when in each clock post so whether to load I to A or to keep A the same so when you have uh, the when load input is 1 okay uh, so you if this is 1 uh, let's see what happened if this is 1 then this will be 0 and this will be 1 again right because of the inverter so if this is 0 okay you see in here if this is 0 this branch will be 0 okay so that means the feedback loop from output will be disabled so this whole feedback loop will be disabled okay however this will be 1 so this feed forward loop this feed forward path will be enabled so that means you will enable data to transfer from I to A if you keep the load to be 1. Now if the load is 0, the opposite will happen. The load is 0, this will be 1, this will be 0. So now the feed forward path will be disabled, right? Feed forward path is disabled. So it won't accept any data introduced from I. So now you can actually hold uh, you can hold the value of your registers at the same spot at the same constant value. You can update, you can change this, you can do whatever you want with this, and this will not change. Um, so also when load is zero, right? This also zero. So this is one because this is one. It will accept the feedback loop from A, so A feedback in here, and feed into D again. So every clock cycle, this will stay the same. Okay. So if you have once again, if load is equal to one, you allow value to update from I to A. If uh, load input is zero, then keep the registers constant. So next we have the shift registers, okay? So shift registers technically is a serial connection of all of the D flip flop, okay? So the this type of registers, uh, uh, this is this is capable of shifting the binary information held in each cell to its neighboring cells, okay? In a selected direction, okay? So the most basic form of this uh, sweep registers only use flip flop, no extra gate, just connected all of the flip flop together. So you can have a standard sweep registers in this form where you connect on of the D flip flop in series in a serial connection. In this, it, when I as I said before, you can ship the information to a neighboring cells. So from one cell to a neighboring cells in a specific direction, okay, you cannot just ship it backward. In this configuration right here, it depends on the uh, it depends on the configuration of your flip flop because flip flop 
transfer data from D to Q. So data always transfer in this direction. Okay. So at every clock cycle, the value will jump like a frog. Okay. The value will jump from here, 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 to here, to here. If you need some exercise or if you need some uh, example, please go back to the example of the adder uh, at the end of the flip flop lecture. So here is the example of the table for you. At every clock cycle, for example, the first clock cycle, if I have data to be 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, the next clock cycle, all of this will be shifted to the right. So 1 will jump to Right, from F0, we jump to F1, from F, FF1, we jump to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, okay, and you load the new data in, okay. Okay, so another topic is to transfer data from one register to another register. If you have a serial load register, that's going to be a piece of cake, you just have to connect the two things together, then you can transfer it. Uh, however, let's consider this, the scenario of transferring data from uh, considering transferring data from one ship registers to another ship registers. Okay, data can be transferred from A to B. Uh, the way to do that is you can apply and enable gate so an end gate okay uh, basically to turn on and turn off the clock so if you can selectively uh, decide when the clock will be on and when the clock will be off you can control the shifting process okay and if you want to keep the value of the original registers in assistance you can uh, have a feedback loop like this uh, to keep the basically to to remain the value of registers A. So in summary, if if I design this one to be a four bit, if I design this one to be a four bit register, uh, so A contain four bit, B contain four bit. Uh, if I need to transfer A to B, I just need to turn the clock on for four cycle. Okay. So basically, uh, turn on the clock for four cycle. After that, the day after four clock cycle, data in registers A will remain the same. Data in register B will be updated to be equal to A. Okay. So let's examine this circuit in here. So as I say. You can have the ship control signal. Okay, this signal can be turned on for four clock cycle. Okay, so that means the output here, the data that go into your ship registers, will be like this. So it will be flat, then will be turned on for four clock cycle. In previous slide, I said that yeah, do not touch the clock. However, you can do some modification like this, like enable gate, uh, but the key important is to make sure that the clock coming in each register or each flip-flop have to be synchronous. So there should not be anything between here that affect the, the synchronism of the clock. So let's go through the example. If initially I have registers A, have the value of 1, 0, 1, 1, and registers B have the value of 0, 1, I mean 0, 0, 1, 0, and this registers is a right ship registers, a ship right registers, so the data will be shifted from left to right, okay? So what happened in the next clock cycle is, okay, so you see that the data got shifted to the right, Right, the data got shifted to the right, and also uh, the so the number one, the number one uh, of the initial come out and feedback to here, and the 
bit on the the bit on this side get shifted to here. So in the next clock cycle, you can see this whole thing. B will be shifted to the right one more time. This number one will come here. Also, that number one will be come back here. So that number one come back here. The other number one jump up to here. So we repeat this for another two cycle. And at the end, after four clock cycle, you can see the ship registers A come back to its original value because you keep feeding it back, right? But also you use every single bit that it fit, feed it back, you also feed forward to this registers B. So after four clock cycle, registers B value become registers A value. Okay, next is serial addition using ship registers. So you can perform addition serially using ship registers. Remember the exercise that we had at the end of the D flip flop, the flip flop lecture. So I'm just gonna go through this quickly. You can have a serial input of A and B. You can have registers A and registers B to store the value. Okay. Then you can feed up, feed all of them to a single bit adder. And you can take out the sum. Uh, the carry out will be stored in the memory element, this, such as the flip flop. Then feed it back to the carry in. Okay. So how many bit is this adder gonna be? Mm. You can basically make it into an n bit adder, right? As big as you want. Uh, but the, the the full adder in here is always one bit adder. So basically the math that you're doing is one bit at a time. The sum also appear one bit at a time, but you can also store this one in another register for storage. Okay, so here's one example for how it works. Uh, for a full description, please go back to the the end of the lecture, the fifth love lecture. Okay, next is universal ship registers. So what if you want to design a, a registers that can either receive or transmit data? Okay, it can receive something or it can transmit something uh, in serial or in parallel. Okay, you can choose either in serial or in parallel. If you do serial, you can either let it uh, shift right or shift left. It's up to you. Uh, and also it can reserve the data constant. So this universal ship registers will have four mode. Uh, keep constant, ship right, ship left, or parallelly load. So I will have a block diagram in here. So what the input of this universal ship registers is the clear control. Okay, this input is just to clear uh, this input just to clear the whole registers back to zero, like a reset. It need a clock for synchronizing the operation. Also, it need a selection inputs. Okay, so because we have four mode, right? So if you have four mode, you need at least two bits to define four mode. Okay, so you can have uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 for four mode of transferring. It will have a serial input to uh, for the ship write mode. Okay, so this uh, if MSB in like this, so it will take uh, input in, then ship it to the right. And also for serial shift, it can also have another input for uh, LSB in, which is shipping t to the left. Okay. And for parallel parallel loading, it can accept a, a parallel input, and always it has the output of the messages. Okay. So the key component is you need four D flip flop courses. Let's say if you have, it's a 4-bit, so you need 4D flip-flop, 
uh, and you need if you have four D flip flop, you need four multiplexer. Okay, so this multiplexer will accept uh, S0 and S1 as the selection mode. So the multiplexer always have four mode. Okay, four mode to selection bit. So if the selection uh, is if the selection is uh, S okay. If the selection is uh, S S1 is still zero, okay. So what you want to do is maybe you need to design some kind of feedback loop uh, so that the data will not be changed, okay. Uh, I will open all this, okay. So look at this diagram here. If the selection is zero zero, okay, that means you could select the zero pin in here, right? So if you see carefully, the zero pin is connected to is from the multiplexer connected back to the connected back to the uh, output of the registers. So basically, it will create a constant feedback loop for the registers. So remember, um, remember the load. Remember the load, uh, the load registers. When you have a constant feedback loop like this, you can keep the output of the registers to be the same, right? Every single clock cycle. Okay, so the output of the registers remain constant for this selection. For the next selection, uh, zero one. So pin number one will be selected, right? If pin number one is selected. The, the multiplexer will take in uh, so the left mouse back here multiplexer will take in the MSB in which is the zero input for ship right so it will take in right so this input go here and you can have an output from that serials in here it now it instead of being feeding back right it's not gonna be feeding back here because zero is not selected but one is selected, so it will be fitted forward to one, and again repeated that direction to have a forward feed to the right. Okay, so now you have a ship right operation. What if you have S0, S1 equal one, zero? So pin number two will be selected. So similarly, just go from uh, LSB in, which is this pin right here. Okay, shift it to here, from here. Also feed it back to num pin number two. Also feed it back to pin number two. So you can see the operation. Now it's a left shift operation. What if it's S0, S1 is one, one. So in this case, it will be feed it directly to the output of them at the same time. Uh, and it taking the parallel input from I3 to uh, from I4 to I1 or from I3 to I0 stuff to how you define everything fitted to the output so you can have a, a, a parallel load in one clock cycle so here is the uh, mode control table so why do we need to use ship registers so ship registers is often used uh, in to interface uh, different digital systems. Sorry, it should be plural, which are remotely without remote or far away from each other. So let's say if you want to transmit data, okay, let's say n bit data between two point two point, you may just want to use n number of wires, okay. So if the distance is far away, it will be expensive. So let's assume uh, you know the wire cost is $1 per feet uh, for some couple wire. Now, if you want to transfer 64 bit of data from uh, two locations, sorry, plural, which is uh, 100 miles apart, uh, it will cost you, uh, let's say, so I'm gonna do the math here, so if it's a dollar a fit, 
100 miles convert from feet to miles so I have this is the price of one wire right but then I have to multiply everything for 64 because you have 64 bit to transfer so the total cost of this project is like over like 33 million seven hundred ninety two thousand dollars pretty expensive huh so if now if you use a ship registers to transfer data serially you can save over 98 percent of the cost for the project so repeat the whole math but only multiply for one now you reduce the cost to 528 like 528 thousand dollars so you just helped your team save over 33 million dollars big number huh so it's time to expect a bonus from your boss maybe haha <laughs> so here is how you can build the system uh, so instead of having 64 expensive long 100 miles wire to transfer data you can just have one single one bit transmission line here okay then in the transmitter module you can have 64 bit parallel data go through a parallel to serial converter then hook up to a 64 bit registers okay then in the receiver have a 64 bit registers okay then transfer to a serial to parallel converter and now you can receive this data similar with what you transmit in the beginning so how can we do a large scale registers implementation so you can uh, implement large volumes of registers such as load uh, registers in a chip you can have a bunch of them okay on registers can be tied to the same input just just a data you can use something like the multiplexer or decoder to select which register to be enabled at a certain time so you can have clock here you can have a dmux here so this is uh, usually for a large scale computer when you have a bunch of different memory storage and each memory storage is as a single separate cell uh, you may not want to access all of your data at once you want to access one data then access another data so this is a good practice to access like let's say thousand of registers at once because you need to turn everything off but only turn one one of them on at, this, like, at, at once uh, you can share the same data input line uh, this method of sharing the same line is called bus so you can have the same data bus feeding to same registers okay you can assign address which is gonna be encoded in the multiplex the demultiplexer or the decoder so that you can access each one correctly so let's do one small exercise for registers design um, so using registers or any other component you might need uh, let's create a circuit that performs the following function so it has a uh, one data input uh, called data bit uh, and one data output called output bit okay so this circuit also have three extra inputs okay the clock an enable signal and some selector signal so this one need two separate input or you can have two bit so two lines so the circuit has the circuit can have a capability of shifting uh, one of a set of four registers okay so there's total four registers but it shift one when enable is one so the new data can be placed into the specific registers uh, into the register comes in on the data bit and the data uh, to be shifted out 
on the out put bit when one of the registers is currently having its data transferring or uh, the remaining of them have to keep the value the same so let's go through the answer so first we will have four registers constructed in here okay we have an output bit for output we have all of the input that we need here so first of all let's have a data bit coming into a demultiplexer because what we need to do is we need to decide where should uh, where should it data this data go to right which registers should this data go into okay so that's why you need a demultiplexer for that uh, also you need another demultiplexer to feed the clock in okay so you can turn on and turn off the clock but uh, using the enable enable pin uh, but also uh, but also the like you need to feed the clock into only one point so you can have the selection selector pin go into both the multiplexer for the output of course the same thing the output you need to use some multiplexer because it only accept one register at once okay so because you have multiplexer you need a selector pin come in and you can have the output come to the output pin here so that's the end of our lecture today so the next lecture will be counter okay i'll see you guys later bye bye